go over some small details of the guillotine and then we'll piece it as we go along. So if Garrett's in turn alignment, like say front headlock position, the first kind of thing that we want to think about, we'll go into the setup properly in a minute, right? So we're going to take an arm in guillotine and we're going to make this drill really simple, right? So I'm going to lock my hands. There's different types of grips. We just go with like say a seatbelt grip for now. And the biggest thing that I want you to do is Keep your shoulder connected to your training partner's back, your chin connected to your training partner's back. I'll show you the right way and maybe the wrong way. So the wrong way to sit back on a guillotine is for me to sit my right hip to the floor and then lose connection with my shoulder and chin. So this is where your training partner's head pops out. All right, so instead of sitting back, what we want to do is we want to lock our hands. I'll keep the shoulder and the chin on the back and now I'm going to pull my training partner on top of me here. And then I throw my leg over the far shoulder and we should get a really tight tap. All right, so that's all we're gonna do now. So instead of sitting back, where I use the shoulder and chin connection, and then the head pops out, or nearly pops out, what I'm gonna do is, if I have a right-sided guillotine, right shoulder goes to the back, my chin goes to his back, I lock it up. What's the way I pull the way from Garrett's heels towards his hands? Here, I fall to my right hip, so if I have a right-handed guillotine, you fall to your right hip, throw the leg over the back, and then we can go into all our finishes from here. So that's all we're going to do for now and then we'll piece it all together. 3, 2, 1. The biggest thing that I want you to get for your guillotine, it could be done with an arm in or no arm guillotine, is don't fall back. Because that's when you're going to lose, like say, your opponent's neck. You want to keep that connection. So don't fall back. Pull your opponent on top of you here. All right, so chin and shoulder are connected to the back. You can see that my head is on the left side. There's like an imaginary center line here. If I bring my head through the center line, now I can put weight on his neck and I can get a super tight guillotine. So you always want to fall on the same side as the choking arm. So we'll go into details on the setup and then we'll do some chains from there. So I'm going to take a chin strap grip. So my longest finger goes towards his ear or his temple. I get my pinky in the crease of his elbow and then I shelve his arm here on my hip. I then walk hip to hip and I lock my hands. All right, I'm gonna to drop to my right hip and then I pull Garrett on top of me and then we can get a super tight finish from here. Again. So we get a chin strap grip. I'm kind of cupping around the ear up by his temple here. My shoulder connects to the back of his neck. My pinky goes to the crease of his elbow. I shelve his leg. I lock my hands. I'm gonna step hip to hip. You can see my shoulder and chin are connected to his back. And then I just lift them up and I drop to my right hip and pull them on top, here. And if I need to make an adjustment, I can put my left foot on the floor, get my head through the center line that we, like we talked about, and lock it up, and then we can get a super tight finish from here. So we'll do it one last time. So again, so chin strap, pick through the arm, take like a seatbelt grip, you step hip to hip, shoulder and chin connected to the back, lift your training partner up, drop my right leg in. If I find I'm on the left side and I need to get to the right side, Left foot goes to the floor, bring your head through the center, and then we can get our finish from here. All right, so three, two, one. One is when I step hip to hip, I can lift my training partner throw my right leg on his hip, and then we can go into like a closed guard guillotine. So that's one variation. The next variation is kind of like, if I find that I can't lift him so much to get my right leg to his hip, what we'll do is, instead of going right leg to left hip, we'll go right leg to right hip, here. And then we can use this foot to change our head position, throw our leg over, and then go into our finishes from here. The first one's gonna be better because it's harder for your opponent to counter, right? So if I go, into this one, normally you'll see this at the highest level. You watch the UFC, Khabib versus Dustin Poirier, Khabib used this, McGregor versus Mendes, there's loads of examples of it. When someone drops down to a guillotine here with the shin across the belly, your training partner can push the knee, roll to their back, and then start to cause scrambles and come up on top. Whereas if we get the close guard guillotine, he can still counter it, but he can't counter it with that roll. He'll counter it with a stack, so he'd put weight on my left shoulder. If this happens, we can start to put our foot to the floor, adjust that head position, and then we can go into the finish. If your training partner stacks you so much that you can't adjust, this opens up sweep options to come up on top, 
all right? So that's what we're gonna do next. So if you wanna have a good guillotine game, you have to have a good like wrestling up game and sweeping game. Don't just think of the guillotine as just a submission, use it as control for sweeps and wrestle ups, right? So let's go into our close guard setup. So I step hip to hip, I lift, throw the leg over, make that adjustment if I need to. So best case scenario, chin and shoulder to the back, we get the finish. Garrett's gonna counter this by putting my left shoulder back on the mat. So what we can do here is put our foot to the floor and start to hip escape where I bring my head from my left side to my right side here. All right, then we can go into our finish. If that doesn't work and he's stacking, so if you really stack me, feet are close together, I can't put my foot to the floor. What I'll do is I'll bring one leg down to the knee, second leg down to the knee, my right foot goes behind Garrett's left leg, I lift and then I scissor. Let me come up on top for our mounted guillotine or just take regular mount. All right, so we'll run through that one more time. So again, so we're here, step. Try and make the adjustment. Head goes over the far side, we get the top. That's the best case scenario. If I find I can hip escape, I'll do is I'll bring left foot down to his knee. See, I've kind of scissor on my legs, right leg down to his knee. I'll lift and then I'll scissor my left leg come up on top. We can go into our mounted guillotine finish or just take mount, all right? So when I sit back for my guillotine and say Garrett puts my left shoulder on the mat, if you find that your partner's foot is just so close to you that you can't get your leg in, I want you to like think about, see the way my knees and hips are facing the ceiling? I'm gonna use like the inside of my knees to kind of like pivot off Garrett's hip here. Now my knees are kind of facing towards the wall. Now I can put my butterfly hook in and then I can start lifting to come up on top. What's happening there is, if Gary is here and he's like really close, when I push, I'm pushing his knee back, which allows me to put a butterfly hook in. Go again. So we're here, so if you watch his left leg, can't get this hook in, because he's, he's keeping his knee close to my hamstring. So I, my knees are kind of facing up towards the ceiling, I twist, then I put my hook in, then I start to lift up on top. All right, so let's keep that little detail go because it's really important. This is my favorite leg position for guillotines, and you'll see why. So we get the chin strap, we shelve our training partner's leg, I step hip to hip. If I find that I can lift Garrett and throw this foot into close guard, we're always gonna take this, right? But what's better than this is, let's say we can't lift him and he's keeping weight on his left hand. So or even, even somewhere there and I just can't lift him up. Instead of going under the elbow, I'm going over the elbow, all right? And this is excellent because number one, he can't use his left hand to defend the guillotine. Yeah, so I can get a good finish from here. And number two, if the guillotine doesn't work, I could just switch to an easy triangle. All right, so that's why that one works so well. You're, you're tying uh, submission attacks together. So for me, that's my favorite one to try and go for. So play between lifting your opponent up and then slotting this foot in to close guard, which is a great technique with the benefits of sweeping if it goes wrong. And if I can't lift him and there's weight on his hand, we just throw the leg over the crease of the, the elbow fall to this side, we do the exact same finishing mechanics, so head goes to the right side, we get our finish, if it doesn't work, collar tie, walk our legs up, and then we get our triangle finish. All right, so that's our last one. Three, two, one.